my name is McLean Dobbins, and this is my litter survey. Uh, so the locations I chose were T Dog here on campus and Walmart over by Seawall. Uh, I decided to choose these locations because they're both uh, right by the ocean, which gives them a large environmental impact. Uh, over at Walmart, you have a lot of traffic day to day, a lot of people just throwing stuff out of their cars, and a lot of variation of litter. Uh, over at T Dog, you see more of just fishing equipment, things like that and not even close to the amount of traffic that Walmart gets. It gets a uh, busy uh, couple days, but you usually don't see as much people there. Uh, so over at T-Dog, I decided to survey over by the beach area, a little bit through the, the greenery and under the bridge, uh, just to find as much as I could. And again, I found mostly fishing items, uh, beverage items, stuff like that, people don't, uh, things that people will just throw on the ground. Uh, over at Walmart, I surveyed this section of uh, the parking lot, just going up and down the rows, finding as much stuff as I can. Uh, so here are my litter totals, obviously dominated by carbon, a lot of plastic bags, uh, a lot of receipts, paper items, things like that on the ground at both locations. Uh, did not find a lot of silicon items, found a couple of uh, glass bottles, not that much, uh, a lot of metal cans and uh, beer caps. So here are my graphs by category and density. Uh, plastic bags, uh, pretty much even uh, from Walmart and T-Doc. Uh, a lot of people just throw in their uh, bags that they bring their fish and stuff with, uh, things like that. Uh, density, Walmart definitely uh, had more litter density, uh, especially twice as much of plastic bags, uh, which makes sense right at Walmart. Uh, but everything, there was more of at Walmart than T-Doc which makes sense, there's a lot more traffic there than you would see here. Uh, so my interesting items were a Nerf bullet and soft plastic fishing lure through carbon. Uh, the Nerf bullet was actually polyurethane foam and uh, there's a chemical equation for it. Uh, the soft plastic lure, uh, which is just a little soft plastic uh, thing that uh, used to fish, and there's the chemical equation for that. Uh, the beer bottle cap and the tin foil are both alloys I didn't know the specific uh, of what they use, so I just put aluminum for both of those. Uh, for silicon, I had a glass bottle and a hair tie, which is a little, pretty much rubber band. Uh, there's a chemical equation for both of those. Uh, for my components, uh, for carbon, I chose a cigarette, and the first component would be nicotine, and there's the formula for that. And the second component, which is a filter, which is cellulose acetate, and the formula for that is there as well. Uh, same thing for metal. I didn't know the exact alloys of what were used, so I put aluminum for both of those. And the same things for uh, my silicon items, a glass bottle, and a hair tie. So the turnover rate, uh, none of these are degradable. Uh, the, uh, the cigarette, the beer can, or the hair tie, um, none of them are easy, easily degradable, and they'll all take a very long time for them to degrade, if at all. Um, Short-term effects, uh, obviously they're by the water and can easily can get blown to the ocean and affect the wildlife there. And pollute and talk, pollute and add toxins to the environment. Uh, Long-term effects, uh, pretty much the same thing. They can harm wildlife and pollute the environment. And uh, they will all take a very long period of time to degrade. And here are my switches.